Hey guys, Vlad from Lucy Pixel, and I'm very excited to bring you once again the Rhino Arc 2. This is not a new system, but Kyle from Rhino just got in touch with me. So what's up, Kyle? Amazing guy. Uh, he got up and he got in touch with me and said, Hey, would you like to check out a new firmware update where now you can add up to five keyframes on this at once? Uh, and I said, Yeah, absolutely. So to his amazing generosity, he sent me a whole unit, the new slider, new motor, new Arc 2, new focus module. Thank you, Rhino, you guys are awesome. Um, and he said, let us know what you think. You're under no obligation to, to say nice things, just let us know. And uh, um, to give you a little bit of back history on what brings us to today and me doing this follow-up review on this not new slider, it's a couple of years old now, I originally started with their competitor, Edelchrome. And then after a couple of months, uh, I, I got really seduced by a couple of raving reviews by Gerald Undone and Caleb Pike, two, two YouTubers that I completely look up to, and uh, where they couldn't say nice enough things about the Rhino system. And what actually got me to buy this original system in the first place was a video by Gerald called Why I Switched to Rhino. And he was originally with Edelkron, and he listed all of the things he preferred about Rhino. So I pulled the trigger, I went on the website and I bought it. I didn't contact them and say, hey, I'm a YouTuber, send me some free stuff. They didn't know who I was from a hole in the wall, but I bought it and I pulled it out of the box and I was really, really impressed as I am today impressed with just how bloody gorgeous this thing. It really looks futuristic and stealthy. It's got a very cool carbon fiber look to it. Really looks pro. Um, however, I ran into an issue where it ran over this ethernet cable, which I still think is a very annoying design feature that I hope that they fix in future versions. But they sent me a new one right away because they're amazing. Their customer service is like stellar. And then I ran into another issue where this thing would, would, would wig out if I tried to do a fast move, anything under 12 seconds. So if I was doing a move that was under 12 seconds, it would go and it would, it would kind of wig out and I'd go, ah, what did I do? And I thought I was burning out the motor or something like that. So 72 hours later, I had a brand new Rhino Arc 2. Like I said, they're amazing. And then I had the same issue with the new Arc 2. <laughs> so they said, okay, just don't do any moves under 12 seconds. I was like, cool, I'll, I'll just, I'll, I'll try to be nice with it, right? And then the new issue was where the battery was dying on it. Within two or three weeks of having it, it was, must have been a faulty battery. So when I would power it on, it would be at maximum 90 and then 70% and then 30% and this is supposed to be a fully charged battery. It was plugged in the whole time. So at that point, I posted a video saying, even though I love Rhino and I still do, I think you still think you're an amazing company. Um, I said, uh, I actually, my video was titled why I switched back to Edelkron. And it was actually a direct word for word, bullet point by bullet point, response to Gerald Undone's video that got me to buy this in the first place. And I described all the reasons why I preferred the Edelkron system at the time. But again, like I said, it's subjective. And I may have had very, very crappy luck with the Rhino system because neither Gerald nor Kyle seemed to run into any of those issues, but I just had crappy luck, what can I tell you? And I don't have any particular loyalty to one company or another, I just went with what was what was better for me at the time. So you check out that video over here. Now, Kyle got in touch with me, sent me this new unit. So again, a huge thank you to, to Rhino for that. And I took it out of the box. I was completely seduced yet again by how gorgeous this thing is. I, I made sure that the firmware up was updated on the app. Everything was very fluid, worked great. Powered it on, the battery's at 100%. Awesome. So I'm gonna stop there. Wardrobe change. I posted my review video earlier today. But because I'm unprofessional and impulsive, uh, I didn't realize I had, check, I, I had set the motor setting wrong. And I posted the video and I said, sorry, I can't recommend it. There's a lot of buggy things happening, uh, which is, I'm not trying to save face, but uh, I had run into a lot of bugs in the past with Rhino. That's why I posted that original video a year and a half ago. So I kind of thought, okay, same old slider, same old issues and stuff like that. And I said, basically, I can't remember it. I, I can't recommend it. I got in touch with Kyle directly and I said, Sorry, here's my bullet points. These are the things that didn't work. You know, forgive me. Uh, and he, he, he wrote back very diplomatically, considering the fact that he must have been a little bit annoyed with me. He said, it looks like you probably have the wrong motor settings. And I said, oh, I totally forgot about that. So I pulled that video off and here's an updated version of it. Uh, that said, I am going to give you a fair review. There's competition we have to compare this to. And I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm gonna review it based on its own merit. Now that I know that the motor settings are accurate and I make sure all the settings are accurate and stuff and stuff like that, let's give you an updated version of this one where I'm not being an idiot. So if I know if Larry the cable guy were here, he would say, here's your sign, 
right? <laughs> I am stupid. <laughs> so I apologize to Rhino. Let's, let's try to redeem myself here. So I'm gonna turn this back on. Actually, wait, no, before I do that, let me tell you a little bit about the settings that I'm gonna set, because I noticed that whenever I turn it on, it kind of goes into this auto shut off mode and then it kind of forces me to have to do it again. So number one, I wanna focus on something pinpoint accurate. So I'm gonna be focusing on the text on something very small. The reason being is I usually test shots with a macro lens. My macro lens is a 70, 70 millimeter 2.8, it's the Sigma art lens. So there's a bit of a zoom to that. And when you use a zoom lens, uh, it tends to amplify two things. Number one, it'll let you know if there's any inaccuracies in the targeting. Number two, it's gonna amplify if there's any kind of slider shake or any kind of motor shake, that little wobble, that picks up and is amplified. Uh, on a telephoto lens. That's why a lot of handheld vloggers use ultra wide lenses to do shots because it kind of hides a lot of that stuff. So, um, yeah, so if there's any kind of inconsistencies in targeting or anything like that, it'll show up. And like I said, we're going to give it a very fair, unbiased perspective. So, let me turn it on. Let me power on the Rhino. Okay. And. I'm gonna first, before I hit record here, I'm just gonna set the settings. So number one, I had the I had the motor setting set to high speed. That's the wrong setting for the slider. If you're using the Arc 2 system with the 24 inch slider, you wanna set the slider length to 24 inches and you want the motor setting to high speed uh, V2 slash Evo. I had mine set to high speed, wrong setting. That's what caused some of the issues that we ran into in my original release of this review video, okay? So I've set that, triple checked it, it's all good. And now we're gonna go into setting up a shot. So I'm gonna calibrate it, stopped at the end, that's good, left to right, cool. Now, I'm gonna start hitting record and I've got my focus point right on the money. So it's dead center in the shot. And I'm, I'm gonna be very, very strict about this because I most of my B-roll shots where I use sliders and jibs for is for macro shots because I like to get nice and close and intimate. So let's set my shot number one and let's set it to the ND32 text, and I want it smack dab in the crosshairs. That's why I'm adding a little crosshair to my review video. I always do this when I'm testing out slider equipment and stuff like that. So key number one's good. Now I'm gonna move almost halfway. Oh, watch out for the cables. It's one of my annoyances with these cables. They're constantly causing issues. So keyframe number two. If there's any problem with that first key shot, it's because of that. Actually, you know what? Let's redo that because this probably ruined the shot. So let's go back. Let's come back in left to right. It's going to move back to the starting position. I'm going to have to hold the cable here. It's the, this is the power cable. This is the Ethernet. But the problem can happen with both of them. Continue. Let's go back on target. I've complained about this cable in the past. It really does get on my nerves. Okay, I'm getting a little glare from my light there. Not confided, it does have a battery inside, so you won't always have to deal with the power cable. But it's not a particularly long cable, and it's a little bit on the firm side, so it, it can influence the camera shot. So there you go. So camera frame number one. Let's move halfway. Let's get right back on exactly that target. A little suggestion to Rhino, their joystick setting, I have it set to low because I'm trying to get as much accuracy as possible. It's a little bit oversensitive, so it tends to be a little jerky, not a game changer. You can see I found my target, but just something of note. Now, for the next shot, I'm gonna aim right at myself. So I'm gonna take a, a shot of me taking a video of myself. How meta is that? Matrix would be very jealous. So there we go. And they're gonna go right on that lens. How are ya? And set keyframe number three. And then I'm gonna go almost to the end of the slider. There you go. You'll notice what one of the things, if you saw my review earlier today, one of the issues when your motor is not properly calibrated is it hits the end, it goes and it grinds out. And that's because it's not finding that right spot. So I wanna go smack dab in the middle. And I'm gonna be really strict about this. I'm not I'm not being nice on it and giving it, giving it a little bit of leeway. No, it's gotta land smack dab on that spot. If it doesn't, I can't use those shots because I do a lot of macro. Let's go right back to the lens again. A little behind the scenes action here. I'm gonna go right back on that ND32. Whoops, uh, okay. 
Okay. Yeah, you can see it's a little jerky. It's just a little bit oversensitive. There we go. So keyframe five is done. Now I'm going to go durations, find, loop, not off, start, move. So it's going to go back to the beginning and keep an eye on these cables. So it's going to go back through them. Oh, it's not hitting the target. It's a little bit to the right. That's a problem for me. I'm being honest here. Now, I know that uh, that that Kyle puts out a lot of videos on, oof, this is not hitting the mark, um, puts out a lot of uh, videos where like if there's backlash or issues like that, these might be issues that can be resolved. I recommend if you're on the market looking to buy it, um, if you're on the market looking to buy it, um, this is something to keep note of. You know, if, is this an issue that's resolved? Has the update been put out, et cetera, et cetera, that kind of thing. So it's not back to where it started. This is an issue I've run in the past, okay? Is it a resolvable issue? I don't know, but I had my, I was taking all the slack off of the cable to make sure that we were running into that issue. Let's start to move. So we know we haven't gone back to an accurate beginning point. Uh, I don't know what's happening here. It kind of started the move to the lens halfway through. No good. You notice how the trucking stopped and now it's slowly try, trying to pan it. And this isn't a heavy lens either. It's not like the motor struck. I don't, I don't have a 70 to 200 here. This is a, a very small light setup. It's kind of on the target. And then it's going to go back. Oh, okay. You can see we have a problem here. <laughs> Woo, what's going on here? Oh boy, it's really taking its sweet ass time finding that last key. And any luck? Well, okay, I've done this test. Oh, and it just shut off for some reason. Okay, whatever. Now I know if I want to turn it back on, then I'd have to go through the, okay. So let's stop recording. You might not know this, but since I spoke to Kyle today, since this morning, I have redone this test multiple times. And I actually got it fairly accurate, but it was never perfectly accurate. I have spoken to Rhino in the past about this. There might be some updates. Kyle might have put out some, some update or something like that. I do recommend checking it out. But just in terms of accurate shots between one and two points, uh, that's unusable for me because owning the center of that frame is the most important thing to, to anybody working with a camera. Anybody who's worked in filmography knows this, um, or videography at least. Um, and this is totally missing its mark very consistently. The other thing is, that's very important to me is, is the pen, tilt, and truck all happening in tandem? Is it going one, two, three, four? Or in this case, you'll notice it went, it went one, two, like one is happening and then the other one's happening. So it's totally throwing off the shot. You're losing the target and you're finding it again. This is something I complained in my original review this morning too. Uh, and I've posted this about the sliders in the past too, I, in my original video. Um, that's not good. Um, that's not good. Um, the other issue is I'm constantly running into cable issues, trying to keep this out of the way. Uh, again, this isn't, this, it's nothing Rhino can do about this until they update the hardware, until they've updated the slider. Um, but um, yeah, it, it is an issue. And this isn't an issue run, you run into with with competing sliders a lot of the time. At least the one, that, at least with Edel Kroner's company, I have a lot of stuff. I own a lot of their stuff. And so the accuracy is not there. So let me give you kind of a rundown of my overall feelings on the update, uh, my overall feelings on the accuracy and the performance of this. Uh, do I think for the price that this level of accuracy and this, uh, this level of functionality is worth the price? If this was the only slider that did this, if this is the only thing I had access to, I'd say absolutely yes, I think it's a great unit. And I think in most part, it's pretty accurate. And like I said, go check out Rhino directly, Rhino Camera Gear on YouTube, check out Kyle's videos, see if he's got any way of addressing this specifically. Um, but, uh, but, there's too many issues happening here. You know, it's they're not it's not in tandem. It's not hitting its target consistently. And this is all stuff that I've spoken to to Rhino about in the past with with regards to that. It's not resolved yet. The other thing, and this is a very big deal. 
the last video that I posted was Rhino had already been like four to six months late on, a, on an update that they had promised months before and they kept updating the date and then they said we had to hire new staff and all that kind of stuff. And I gave them the benefit of the doubt and I give them the benefit of the doubt with regards to COVID and the way it slows down production and, and all that kind of stuff. It's, it can definitely put, throw a wrench in this kind of thing. But in that same period of time, um, Rhino has not been working with any disadvantage that, that other companies don't have. And, you know, their direct competitor, Edelkron, has, between the time of that original version and this update, where all they've really added is five key functionality, albeit it works pretty well, for what it's worth, um, is all they've done. And Edelkron has released multiple different modules, multiple different firmware updates. I've never run into issues like this, even with fairly brand new equipment. Everything just works. And that from a professional, when you're paying that kind of money, you expect these things to just work right out of the gate. And that's not what I'm experiencing here. Um, uh, it's not what I experienced then and it's not what I experienced now. And my original suggestion to, 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 to Rhino was you need to hire more staff and kind of get things moving a little bit faster. And you know, fix these issues a little bit more quickly because this makes working impossible. I can't rely on my equipment at all. And if I was using exclusively Rhino equipment, if I was, if I didn't know that there was competition out there, this would ruin my, my production timing. It would ruin my production quality. I wouldn't be able to use it. I would refund it and I would just, I just wouldn't use this kind of equipment. So there is, there are far more reliable options out there, particularly with Edelkron. I'm just saying it like it is, okay? Um, and a year and a half for an update like this is, I'm sorry, it's way too long. And it, and I would be even more pissed if I didn't have an, al an alternative to that. So I have to be honest about that. And that I don't think is a motor setting thing. Um, this, is, this has been an ongoing issue for some time. Uh, the other thing too is, um, like just for design suggestions moving forward with Rhino, um, uh, if you're just doing simple shots and you're not relying on macro shots and stuff like that, I think that it is a good system. It's not great. Uh, I don't rank it as high as the competition, but for future iterations of the hardware, find a way to integrate this into the slider directly, maybe some rail inside where you can pass the ethernet connectivity through that instead, because this is a real issue. I tried to do this follow-up review uh, like three or four times and I kept snagging the wires constantly, which kept causing the motor to stop. It caused the things to lose lose control and everything like that. Um, it's an issue I had then, it's an issue I have now. It's The hardware hasn't updated and that's definitely something to look into. So how do I feel? Now that I've, now that I, again, I apologize for my, for my impulsive review I posted before. Um, I should have been more professional about that. Does that change my mind on my recommendation? Uh, no, I don't think it totally does. Um, albeit it does work better. I think for the price, um, I think there are just better alternatives at the moment. That said, the design philosophy, the absolutely second to none S tier customer service and build quality on their things. Um, I do have a lot of hope moving forward with Rhino. I think that this, this is a learning opportunity for them. And I think that when and if they release an updated version of the slider and the motor, that it'll, I think that really is that starting from scratch, rebuilding from the ground up can really, really take this company to the next level and have them obliterate the competition because they've had a chance to see what the competition offers in that regard. And it's like when, I, when I'm working on a painting, I find that if I've spent two, three weeks working on a painting and I just feel like I'm in repair mode all the time, my best philosophy, and it's an art tip to all of you aspiring artists out there, start over. <laughs> As my favorite artist, Bekshinsky, would do, he'd throw it in a bin and start a new painting. And it's that starting from scratch that sometimes creates some absolutely magic things. Look what happened with Apple. You know, everybody was on Apple's case and now they're, now my whole studio is full of Apple stuff. So I, I'm absolutely willing to give Rhino another chance. I just can't recommend this because it's just, it's just not there for me, okay? Uh, but I love Rhino. Thank you, Kyle. And again, I apologize to Kyle. Uh, I, you have my utmost support. I will happily use my platform to promote your stuff and be honest and offer you some productive feedback. And uh, yeah, happy shopping. Take care.